Hey guys, this is Eric Vasquez here and today we have a brand new tutorial for you and we are going to be creating a cool poster design that we use with some of our awesome mock-ups and cool objects that we have from this latest bundle. So to start things off, let's just go ahead and open up Photoshop and give our new document here a name. We're just going to call this Beyond the Basics Poster. And this is just kind of a made-up department store name that I'm going to be using here just to show off some of the cool objects and, and realistic looking renders that we have in this bundle here. There's over you know thousands of things in here for you guys to check out. It really is a massive, massive bundle full of great stuff. But because we're making a poster, normally we may be using something around 18 by 24, but for this I'm actually going to make it about half of that size. So let's go ahead and set it up as 9 inches wide by 12 inches tall, and then change the resolution to 300, and you can leave the color mode set to RGB, 8-bit with background content set to white, and then go ahead and hit create. So the first thing we want to do once we have this open here is just double click on the background layer so that we can unlock it and then just hit OK. And now we're going to navigate to our freebie folder for this tutorial so that we can open up our background. So here I've got my background opened up. I'm just going to drag this tab off to the side here so that I can see. And then I'm going to grab this background folder and hold Command and Shift and drag and drop it over here into my document. Now I can press command and the tilde to toggle over to this window and just close it. And now what I want to do is expand the contents of my background folder. And inside you'll see that there's a couple of layers here that are locked. So what I want to do is hold the command key and select both of those locked layers. And then you'll notice up here towards the top of our layers palette, there's a row that says lock and the third icon in here for lock position is selected. So let's go ahead and deselect that, and that's going to unlock those layers. Now, the visibility of this background color layer is currently off, so let's just go ahead and trash that because we don't really need it. And then we can go ahead and close this background folder. Now from here, go ahead and press Command or Control if you're on a PC, plus the letter T on the keyboard to do a free transform. And I'm just going to go ahead and maybe rotate this clockwise while holding the Shift key. Before I press Enter to apply the changes, I'm going to press command and the minus key to zoom out a little bit and then hold down alt option and shift and drag outwards from any of the four corners just to make that a little bit larger and scale it up from the center and then go ahead and press enter on the keyboard. So now that we have our background here we actually don't need this layer all the way on the bottom but Photoshop requires that you have at least one layer in the document at all times so we're just going to go ahead and scrap that for now. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do here is go back to our freebie folder and we can now begin bringing in some of our objects. So the goal here is that we're going to mock up this kind of department store poster that advertises these home goods, you know, some art supplies, electronics, and a bunch of cool stuff. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to grab here is our fabric tablecloth from the freebie folder. And we're going to do the same thing, just bring this tab over, grab the cloth, hold command and shift and dra drag and drop it into your document. Now I can come back and close out of this and the shortcut to close out of a window like this is command or control on a PC plus W on the keyboard. And now once we have our cloth in our document, press command T and I'm just going to move this up here, maybe in the upper left corner. Okay, somewhere around here looks pretty good. And then go ahead and press return to apply the changes. Now let's go ahead and bring in our next object, which will be the white lamp. Okay, so again, move the tab over here, hold Command and Shift and drag the lamp in. Now this time you'll notice that the lamp is quite small, so we're actually going to need to make this a bit larger. Go ahead and press Command T and then once again hold Alt, Option and Shift and drag outwards from any of the four corners to make this quite a bit larger. Okay, and with this lamp here, what I want to do is have, kind of have it going off of the canvas a little bit so that it just creates a little bit of you know contrast and, and energy by you know not having the whole thing in the canvas. It kind of implies that there's more going on outside of this area, which is good. And maybe let's make it just a little bit larger, right about there. And then we can also double click here and just rename this layer lamp in all uppercase and go ahead and do the same thing for your other folders here as well. So I'm just rename, renaming them in all caps just so it's nice and big and easy to see. And then we can maybe move our tablecloth down a bit more. Somewhere around there looks good. All right, and then let's continue. So from here, the next object that we can bring in is our yellow clock. I'm going to click and drag this over here. 
And same thing, this is a pretty small object here, but everything is super high res, and it's basically made into a smart object so that we can easily resize these things as needed. Okay, so again, I'm going to rotate this a little bit, and you can see as I move my cursor over the corner here that it turns into this curved black arrow, and that is what allows me to rotate this. Now, if I wanted to rotate by increments of 90 degrees or 15 degrees even, I would hold down the shift key as I'm doing that. But I want to have a little more freedom and control over it here, so I'm just going to rotate it without holding shift. All right, move the clock up here somewhere. It doesn't have to be all the way in the edge, but somewhere along the top. So from here, we can go ahead and bring in our next object, and I'm actually going to bring in this nice typography letter. Now this is another kind of artistic uh, you know, product here that we can use to show on our, on our workspace, on our poster. And the same thing, I'm just kind of scaling it up. I'm going to move it down here towards the bottom. Now I'm angling it so that the top is kind of pointing towards the center of the document. And doing that is going to help to kind of lead the viewer's eye. So it's just a nice kind of handy device that we can use and design to get people to look where we want them to. The same thing, I'm just going to keep renaming my folders as I go. And then let's continue. So I'm going to open up these white Beats headphones, click and drag these into the document, and then close a few of these tabs really quick. And now you'll see that we have our headphones, which I'm going to scale up by pressing Command or Control plus T, and then holding Alt, Option, and Shift, and just dragging down. And I want to make the headphones quite a bit large, because now that we have a few objects in here, we want to make sure that the size of everything is kind of relative uh, to all the other objects that we're using in our space. So again, I'm going to move this over a little bit towards the edge here, make it slightly larger about there and see how that looks. That's looking pretty good. I've just rotated it a little bit. And for the most part, I'm also trying to have the shadows kind of go in the same direction. So maybe I can make the clock a little bit smaller, just so we can play around with the size of things here a little bit more. And it's okay, you know, you want to have some variation as far as the scale and everything goes. All right, so the next thing I'm going to bring in here is the succulent, which is this really nice green plant. I actually have a few of these in my apartment, and I love them. They're great plants. They're really cool. And just adding a bit of green like this to our design is really just going to freshen it up and make it feel nice and natural. All right, so this one is actually quite big. So once I rename the folder here, I'll press Command-T to do another free transform, and this time drag inwards from any of the four corners while holding Alt, Option, and Shift. From there, what I'm going to do is actually move this down kind of to the lower left corner and maybe rotate it a bit, just like that. It kind of helps ground our composition a bit and just adds a nice kind of feel here. Okay, so returning to our folder, let's go ahead and bring in this tube of paint. Now this is another kind of cool art supply from the, the mock-up toolkit that you guys can, can get with the full bundle, but you can also play around with it here. The full bundle, however, has you know different colors and different kinds of paint and supplies, uh, which is really cool. So this one I'm just going to scale up, maybe rotate a bit, place it a little bit lower between the letter A and the plant. So I'm just going to rename this Tube Paint, and then maybe just bump it up a little bit. It doesn't necessarily have to you know, be the same height as the letter, but just kind of having things pointing at angles like this is a little bit more interesting than having everything be perfectly straight in the scene. All right, so next let's go ahead and open up these art brushes. And you'll notice in this part of the freebie file, there are actually three brushes in here, all kind of in different folders. So we wanna select all three. So I'm gonna select the first one, hold shift and grab the third one, and then hold down command and shift and drag and drop them into my document. Now I'll press command and the tilde key once again to kind of come over here to my other tabs that I've got open, and press command and W to close out of them, choose don't save. And now we have our three brushes. So I'm just going to rename these brush one, brush two, and brush three. Now I can hold the shift key and click on brush one, so I've got all three selected press Command-T, and then once you have this bounding box, hold the Control key and click. And now what you want to do is come down here to the bottom and choose Flip Horizontal, and then once again hold down the Control key, and this time choose Flip Vertical. Okay, and then before we press Enter to apply the changes, 
hold Alt, Option, and Shift and just scale these up a bit by dragging outwards. All right, and now I'm gonna move them up top here and kind of rotate them a bit like this so they're pointing down towards the headphones. Now we can go ahead and press Enter or Return to apply the transformation. One other thing that we want to do here is kind of stagger these and offset them a bit. So I can select each brush now individually and press Command plus T to do another free transform. And this way I can kind of rotate it a bit and make it look a little bit more random as far as their placement or arrangement. This middle brush I'm just going to put back here so that the top of it, or the bottom rather, kind of extends off of the canvas. And then for the third brush, I'll rotate it a bit the opposite way, maybe move it over here just in front of the clock or a little bit closer to the other brushes. Okay, something like that looks pretty good. Maybe move our first brush up a little bit more and just rotate it slightly. Okay, and we are looking pretty good. So let's go ahead and bring in our next object. We're gonna bring in this brush stand now by first moving this tab over here then holding Command and Shift and dragging the brush stand into the document. Now, now that we have you know several objects in here, we have to pay a little bit more attention to the order that they're in. So if I scale this up by pressing Command T and then dragging outwards while holding Alt, Option, and Shift, I can get this to be a bit larger, which is great. But I also want to make sure that I kind of keep it underneath the lamp so that it you know, creates some depth and it's just in the right order. If I had this above the lamp, well, it doesn't really look too realistic because now it looks like this is on top and that just doesn't work. So we want to make sure that that is below the lamp layer. And then you can just hold down the shift key and tap the arrows until you are happy with the size and placement of the brush stand. Somewhere about there looks pretty good. It's kind of underneath the lamp. All right, but you can see now we have some pretty interesting angles um, happening in our document here. So one other object that I want to bring in now is the badge from the freebie folder. All right, so let's bring this badge into the document. Go ahead and close a few of these other windows that we have here. And now same thing goes for the badge. I actually want this to kind of go underneath the red letter on the bottom here. So I'm just gonna zoom in a bit and then use the space bar to kind of click and drag down here to the lower corner. Press Command T to do a free transform on my badge. And now I'm going to rotate it and drag inwards from the corner while holding Alt, Option, and Shift. And let's just make sure that this is underneath our letter. So the shortcut to kind of rearrange your layers here is holding the command key and using the left bracket and just continue pressing the left bracket until this layer is lower and where you want it. Okay, so I'm gonna place this badge somewhere around here and then we'll select our tube of paint. Maybe tap that over a few times. And just move it up a bit just to kind of give it some breathing room there. And now what we're going to do is place a logo on this badge. The next thing I'm going to do is open up this Design Cuts logo, and we're just gonna go ahead and drag and drop this into our document here. Place it above the badge by pressing Command in the right bracket once. And then let's just go ahead and rename this layer Design Cuts logo. And now what I can do is click on this small arrow next to the badge folder to expand the contents of the folder. Now I wanna take the Design Cuts logo and just drop it here in the top level of this badge folder, and then press Command T to do a free transform. Drag outwards a little bit while holding the Shift key to scale it up. And then we can move it down here on the badge and rotate it so that it goes in the same kind of angle or direction as the main part of our badge here. Now obviously this logo is on white and we don't really want that to be showing up. So how can we get rid of that? Well, it's really quite simple. All we have to do is come up here to the blending mode and change it from normal to multiply. And now it looks like our logo is right on the badge. So that's looking pretty good. Now we have most of our shapes in here. Most of our objects are now in the document. So at this point, you know, we can take a few moments here to kind of tweak some of these things, play around with the positioning of them, and just alter them a little bit if we want to. But I think this is looking pretty good and we're in pretty good shape here. So let's move on. From here, what I wanna do is select my very top layer, which happens to be the lamp layer, and I'm going to add a new layer on top. Now I'm gonna press U on the keyboard to get my shape tool. And you'll notice up here on the top toolbar that we have some settings. So let me go ahead and change the fill to none. And now for the stroke, I wanna make sure that it's solid white. I'm going to change the weight to four pixels. 
And now what I can do is zoom out a little bit and I'm going to click somewhere on the top left here and you'll see how I kind of have this crosshair here. I'm using the top and the left of that as kind of an indicator for how much space I have on the top and the left side. Now I'm just going to click and drag all the way down here to the lower right, giving myself an equal amount of space on all four sides. Now once you've done that, go ahead and press Command G to put that into a group folder and we'll just call it frame. Now that just adds a nice kind of elegant you know, frame to the whole thing, just a thin line, it's a nice little detail uh, that makes it feel a little bit more kind of modern and fresh. Okay, so it's little touches like these, the details, it's, it's all about, you know, the feeling that you get when you put these objects together. So we have this nice area here in the center, which is where we're going to add our type. So let's go ahead and add another new layer really quick. Press T on the keyboard to get your type tool, and let's just go ahead and click in here. Now I'm going to type out gifts for the whole family with a period at the end. And then what I want to do is open up my character panel and make a few changes to this. So first, let's go ahead and double click to highlight all of our text. Come up to the window menu and choose character to reveal our character panel. And for the typeface here, I'm using Montserrat, which is actually a free Google typeface, which you guys can download just by doing a search for Google Fonts and grabbing this. Now there's a couple styles here. We have regular and we have thin, light, bold, and black. For this, I'm actually going to be using the bold style. And now for the size, let's go ahead and make this about 72 points because we want it to be nice and large. Okay, but there's one thing here that I don't want and that's you know the fact that everything is in uppercase. I actually want to go upper and lowercase here. So if you come back to your character panel, you'll notice this icon here that's these two T's right next to each other. And that's just indicating that everything is all caps. So if I click that, I've now got upper and lower case. All right, so let's go ahead and while we're over here, click on the color. And we're just going to update this and change it to, let's enter a hex value of 576345, which is this nice kind of earthy green color that we picked up from our plant here. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is move my cursor over here between the word the and whole and then just press return to create a space. Press command A to select all, and then just make sure that our text is centered. So up here in the top toolbar, you can see that our text is centered, but the lines are a little bit too close together. So back over here in our character panel, we can now add some spacing here. So I'm gonna change the line spacing to about 70, and that looks pretty good. All right, so let's go ahead and press command T and just kind of position our type in the middle here. Okay, now we can you know, move some of these other objects around to give our type a little bit of breathing room, but we basically want this to be nice and centered on this background area here. So I'm actually going to move this layer down by pressing Command and the left bracket until it's down here below our other objects, just above the background layer. Okay, and now I can kind of you know, move some of these other objects around just to give it a little bit more breathing room and space. So I'm gonna move the clock over here. Maybe move the tablecloth along with the brushes. So I'm just going to select each of these folders that I wanna move while pressing Command. And I'll also grab the lamp and the brush stand and just move all of these things up and to the left a little bit. All right, just to open that up there. Okay, that looks pretty good. And now I can just Maybe move the headphones a little bit more, grab my text, and maybe move that down a bit. Okay, so you can see the way that the shadows are kind of interacting with the text, which makes it look a little bit better and more realistic. Now, one other thing you can do here is maybe just add a single space after the word the, just to give it a little bit of extra room there. So go ahead and press U once again on the keyboard, and this time come back up to your top toolbar here and we're going to change a few of these settings. So where it says stroke, click on that, choose none, and then click on the fill color, and we actually wanna change this. So the way that we can change the fill color is by holding down the command key and clicking on the color picker icon. Now, for this color, we're actually going to use a nice contrasty kind of orange-yellow color. So for the hex value, let's go ahead and enter E09925, then press enter. Now we still have our rectangle tool selected, so all we have to do is click and drag out 
kind of a long rectangle button shape. And now we're going to add another new layer above that, press T to get our type tool, and just go ahead and click, and we're going to type out the word, the words shop now. And this time we're going to use the same typeface in the same style, monster at bold, but we want to change the color to white. So we can either come back up here and open up our character panel. You can also change the color here as well. You'll see that we have that green. So if we click in here, let's just make it white. And then for the size, we can go ahead and make this about 12.5. Looks pretty good. And we want to actually add some kerning or some spacing between these letters. So the way that we can do that is either manually coming over here to our character panel and entering a value of about 240 and pressing enter. Or you can use the keyboard shortcut Alt Option and the right arrow to add space or Alt Option and the left arrow to decrease the amount of spacing in between your letters. All right, from here, I just want to center this kind of inside of the button shape. Maybe move it up a bit. And now I can kind of resize the button around it. All right, so I'm going to select my rectangle, maybe make this a bit shorter. And if I want to, you know, move this in from both sides, I can do that by moving my cursor over the right or the left handle and holding the Alt Option key. And now as I resize it, you'll see that it's coming in from both sides. If I didn't hold Alt Option, I would only be resizing it from one side at a time. And now we can select all three of these layers by first selecting the Shop Now, holding Shift and selecting the Gifts for the Whole Family text. Press Command G to put it into a group folder. And let's just go ahead and call that Headline. Now we can kind of move around that whole group all together. Okay, so we're doing pretty good. The last detail that we want to add here are some prices for these items. Because just like you might see in, in a realistic catalog or flyer, you know, you would usually see these kind of uh, breakouts where you'd see, you know, okay, the brushes are a certain price, this is a certain price, just for a quick read so you know how much all of these items cost. So to do that, let's first create another layer, press T to get our type tool, and now we can just go out, go ahead and type out our first item. So the first thing we're going to do here is type out the words yellow clock, and we definitely don't want this bright color. We want something that's actually going to read on this background here. So I'm going to, oops. So I'm going to use the same font here. Press Command A to select all the type and then go ahead and change the color. And let's make it a nice gray color by typing in the hex value 888888. Basically just eight six times. All right, and now we can use Montserrat. Let's change it from bold to regular. And we also don't really want this to be all uppercase, so I'm just going to retype that yellow clock. And then I'll add a price here. I'm just kind of making these prices up. Let's add a price of $19.99. Now for the other elements here, we don't want the, the kerning or the spacing between the letters to be 240, so I'm just gonna change that back to zero for now. And I'm going to change the size of this to about 10 point, just so it's you know, pretty small in our document. We don't want it to be overpowering. And the next thing I want to do is actually make this two lines. So I'm going to move my cursor between the dollar sign and the semicolon, press delete just to get rid of that space, and then press shift and return. And now, as you can see, there's quite a lot of space in between these two lines. So press command A to select all. And back over here in our character panel, you'll notice that the line spacing is currently set to 70. So we're just going to adjust that and make it smaller, maybe to somewhere around 13. All right, and that looks pretty good. Now what I can do is press Command T, and I'm just going to move this up here so that it's right next to our yellow clock. Okay, now what we can do, instead of you know, redoing all those settings for each you know, price that we want to add for all the items, we can press Command J to duplicate it, Command T to kind of move this where we want, and now we can type out the other items and prices that we want for each of these. So for this next one over here, we can type out, you know, set of brushes. And let's go ahead and make these say $14.99. Then create another copy. Move this over here. Maybe we'll add the price for the white lamp. And we can just say that this is, I don't know, $24.99. Something like that. Go ahead and press Command J to make another copy. And then let's go ahead and zoom in a bit. Press Command T and we can move this over here to our headphones. 
right? So we're just going to type out headphones, and these are generally a little bit more, so let's make these about $149.99, like so. These are Beats after all, so you know those are a little, a little more pricey than our regular headphones. All right, but you can play around with the placement here. Maybe move these inside the headphones just to make it a little bit more interesting and not to crowd the center area too much. All right, but let's just continue here adding the prices and the names for our other items. So this one is going to be our brush stand, which we can make $11.99. That sounds about right for a brush stand. And then I'm just going to hold down the space bar and move down here. Press Command J to make a copy of my previous item and price. And then let's go ahead and add our succulents. And for these, let's go ahead and enter a price of maybe $8.99. I feel like I'm just making up my prices here, but that's okay. You guys get the idea. All right, and it's, it's all about, you know, these little details that just kind of make it feel more authentic. All right, this one is going to be water color paint. All right, and for this tube of paint, we can just say it's $4.99. And then, of course, we have our red letter down here in the corner. So for this, I'm just going to call it typography letter. Okay, and we'll enter a price of $11.99. All right, so now we have all of our prices in here for our items. We can select the top price on our layers palette, hold the shift key and select the bottom one, and then pr press command G on the keyboard to put them into a folder. And we can just click inside here and rename this folder prices. All right, so if we need to, we can expand this folder here and now kind of you know, move around any of these item descriptions as needed. But I think it's looking pretty good. All right, maybe just give a little more space there to our text in the middle. All right, somewhere about there. And then let's go ahead and save our work really quick. We want to make sure that, you know, if we haven't done so already as we're working, that we save our layered file because we're about to actually flatten the image and export it as a JPEG. So once you've saved your artwork, come back over here to the top right of the layers panel and click on these three lines, this hamburger menu as I like to call it on the top right. Now we're going to click here and come all the way down towards the bottom to where it says flatten image. And when this you know, dialog box pops up asking if you would like to discard hidden layers, you can just go ahead and hit OK. And from here, we're just going to save this out as a high-res JPEG. So to do that, come up to the File menu. We're going to come down here to Export, Save for Web Legacy. Now this will just create a smaller file size for our JPEG, as opposed to just going to File Save As and saving it that way. But they call this kind of a legacy format because you don't really do it as much in the latest version of Photoshop. So once you have this preview screen here, just check to make sure that you have a JPEG selected in the upper right and that it's set to a maximum compression quality with a quality all the way of 100, all the way cranked up. Then go ahead and hit save and save this out next to your PSD. So we now have our JPEG and our flattened PSD. So the next thing I'm going to do is open up my room interior that we're going to use to display this nice looking poster. So I've opened up my Printerior 7 layout, and you'll see here that there's only really one folder. Our background has been merged, and we just have this folder here called All Frames. Let's go ahead and click the arrow to expand that, and inside you'll see all these different sizes for the frames. So what we want to do is turn off the A4 size, come down here to our largest one, which is 18 by 24, and turn the visibility for that layer on. Now I can click this arrow to expand the contents and reveal everything inside of this folder. And right in here you have the ability to change all of these different frame colors, which is really cool and offers you a lot of customization. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and use this one called Black Wood. And then if you look down a little bit further here, you'll notice that there's a few other folders. We have Shadows, Artwork, and Artwork with a Matte. So I just want to use the regular Artwork folder, so I'm going to have to turn this one just above it off. The one that says Artwork with a Matte, let's go ahead and poke out the eyeball to turn off the visibility there and then extend and expand the contents of our artwork folder. Now here you'll see that you have a smart object layer. And if I were to double click in here, you can't really see the full name for it, but it's basically saying, you know, double click to place your artwork. 
So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to double click the smart object and now we're going to come over to our flattened poster image and drag it into this file. And now I'm going to press command and tilde to come back over here, close out of this and choose don't save because we don't want to overwrite our PSD. And now what I can do is select my layer one in here, hold the control key and click on the layer and I'm going to convert this to a smart object. And the reason I'm doing that is just so I can resize this and play around with it without having to worry about any loss in quality. All right, so I'm pressing Command-T to do a free transform and then scaling it down while holding Alt, Option, and Shift. And now I'm just holding Shift and dragging inwards from the corner so that I can get this to fit nicely inside of this. And it should actually fit perfectly because we did exactly 50% of this size. But again, remember that we are working in pixels, not inches with this image. So it's going to be quite a bit smaller than you know the actual size or dimensions that we created our original poster in. So now that we fit this in here nicely, all we have to do is press Command S to save it, and it's going to update in our mockup. So now when I come back over here, you can see the entire poster is fitting nicely in this frame. And it looks really nice in this room, especially. It's kind of a cool industrial looking, you know, like something you would see in a department store. But let's go ahead and add a few more details just to push it a little bit further. So over here in your freebies folder, I've created a quick little logo called Beyond the Basics. And as you can see, it says homeware, sporting goods, art supplies. So just a little bit of an idea of the kind of things that you will find here. Now I'm going to click and drag this logo over into my, my room layout, and then just hold the shift key and use the arrows to kind of tap it into the lower left hand corner. What I want to do from here is make a copy of it. So I'll press Command J, and now Command T to do a free transform. And if I hold the control key and click on it, I can then choose this option here that says rotate 90 degrees clockwise. So let's do that and then move this up. And I want to now make it larger. So I'm going to zoom out a bit by pressing command and the minus key and then hold alt option and shift and drag out from any of the four corners of the bounding box. And then let's try and place this in a way that looks pretty good. I might actually crop it so that you only really see the beyond and the word the just so it kind of goes off of the page a little bit. All right, maybe about there looks pretty good. It can even go a little bit smaller if we want to. And then just move it up while holding the shift key and then press enter once you're happy with the size and the placement of your text. So from here, what I'm going to do is press the number one on the keyboard. And what that's going to do is lower the opacity to 10%. So all the number keys on your keyboard control the opacity by increments of 10. So I'm pressing one, and then what I wanna do is come down here to the bottom of the layers palette and click on this option here that says add layer mask. Now once you've done that, press G on the keyboard to get your gradient tool and come up here to the top toolbar for a second. We wanna make sure that we have a linear gradient selected that fades from solid black to transparent. So just click on this box for a second and you can see some of these presets here. And you'll see that it says foreground to transparent, solid black to nothing, which is exactly what we want. Go ahead and hit OK. Now with your gradient tool still selected, we can click somewhere down here just below our, our canvas area, hold the shift key and drag upwards. And that's just going to fade out the bottom of our text here. So that way it kind of, you know, doesn't compete too much with the logo in the bottom left. It's pretty much, you know, clear behind it. Okay, and now we have completed our poster design, our mock-up showing all these cool realistic objects for our Beyond the Basics poster. And then from there, we put our poster design into this nice 18 by 24 frame so that we can present it in this really cool looking room. That about does it for this tutorial, guys. I hope that you've enjoyed it. And it's just a small sample of all of the cool stuff that you guys will find in the full bundle. So I definitely encourage you to check it out. It's some of the best mock-up templates that you'll find anywhere all for $29. So it's a really great deal. You guys could have a lot of fun with this. And just remember that, you know, the way that you present your work really makes it look a little bit more professional if you can get some nice looking mock-up templates like the ones you'll find here. So as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. This is Eric Vasquez, and we'll see you next time.